things back. And I was running you, but I was there for a few years. And um, he was just, he was a nice kid. He was one of those kids that was always just, he's a real smart aleck. He was just, was, was a bright kid, which didn't help me, right? Made him more dangerous. And we were outside one day in youth group, and uh, he was just, just trying to push my buttons. He was just, you know, kind of not taking the Lord serious. And now for your weekly dose of metal. Here are your hosts, Morgan Danielle and Luco Blaze on the Metal Experience. All right, we just heard Tide's Cult. That was the song Anthem. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but that's off the upcoming album. Your memory has tarnished this beautiful place. And it comes out on Halloween. You could pre-order available now on Bandcamp. And then we heard a fucking glory hole guillotine track that was beating up kids at the Bible study. What a badass song title. I want to beat up kids at Bible study. Check out the guys playing Forever Death Fest pre-party at Cobra Lounge December 5th with Matianic, Everything Must Die, and Inner Decay. I am Luco Blaze with Morgan Danielle sitting over here picking her nose. What? And we are rocking out here with us for the first I time. I am not. Her Worst Nightmare. Why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves and what you do in the band? What's up, man? I'm Jason. I play drums. My name's Mo. I play guitar. Yo, what's up? My name's Carlos. I'm vocals. Just the three-piece, right? Well, well we got a bassist, yeah. but he's not here. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. sometimes. So who's your sometimes bassist? That'll be Nick. Yeah, Mom. Nick. Nicholas. <laughs> he, yeah, he couldn't come tonight. Nick on slapping the bass. Well, Jason, you've been here 43 other times. 44. 44 now. Yep. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is the rest of the guy's first time. Well, thank you guys for coming out on a school night, hanging out with us. Thank oh, you, yeah. man. Why don't yeah, you go thank ahead, you both. give us the, uh, the background, how you guys all met, how the band started, get, how you guys came up with a name. Give me the, give me the dirty details. The well, dirty like, details? The dirtiest, yeah, please. Yeah, shit, man. I've known I mean, Jay. Since. Yeah, they've known each other I've a, known a Jay long since time. I was like 13, randomly met, playing softball. It was fucking awesome. After that, like, we just started hanging out, you know, interest in music with each other. Eventually, we started to jam, you know, once stuff, you know, hit off. I was a bassist for him and one of his other old bands. What was it called? For Every Sunny Sun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, he wasn't in the in the. I wasn't band. in the band. Yeah, Mo wasn't. We didn't know Mo yet. Yeah, I didn't come into into the picture till like 2008, 2007. He was still a hatchling. <laughs> a lot of those songs are. Uh, I live in a different songs. neighborhood. Yeah, <laughs> fuck him and his different neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, then I moved, and then I met Carlos, and then he introduced me to everyone, and that's how. Yeah. So how long? When did this band start? When was the formation? Uh, July 2009. Damn, you remember the month? Yeah, that's <laughs> before, you know, all the drugs. <laughs> Perfect. July 2009. Well, what have you bo- boys been doing since? And it's been the same lineup? Basically, um, yeah. Yeah, sort of. Uh, we used to have a different basis. We had a different basis. Yeah, yeah. Greg. <laughs> G-Reg, the mustache. G-Reg, mustache, G-Reg. mustache man. Yeah, we have one other bass player. And other than Nick, yeah, it's always the three of us. Mo recorded um, bass on the record. I did two songs. I'm pretty sure on the the album we put out. But yeah, we record it, so we don't have a bassist. Okay. All the time. So it took you ten years to actually release uh, an album, like pressed and copied on CD. Yeah. Because uh, I know back in the day you gave me a burned copy out of whatever was in your van. <laughs> yeah, in my van. Yeah, yeah, that van was killer. <laughs> but yeah, we had um, three CDs before, so maybe like ten or twelve songs recorded, and like in the world, but nothing, yeah, printed or uh, professional at all. 
so and then like demos. Yeah, not at that point. Yeah, but they weren't really demos. No, they like we took a lot of time and they sound awesome. So they just weren't like produced, yeah. you know, like whatever as, in color yeah, as and an with to our first a show. hard case and stuff. But they were real CDs. Yeah. So like some of them of songs are staying on them, and then um, a lot of whatever um, isn't you know we put on the record. So like a lot of that, a lot of the band he mentioned for every setting song, they became nightmare songs. They're like ones I wrote, and he heard it, so, uh, Mo heard it somehow, and liked them. So you know he just he figured a lot of them out and plays them. I used to play guitar in that band. So uh, he plays them just like I did, so it's killer but better. I mean, I could drum the way I imagined, you know, writing them so he could play them, so they became, like, killer tunes. Good times. <laughs> yeah. So when you refer to yourselves as her worst nightmare, who is her? Who were you thinking of in particular? <laughs> just women in general. <laughs> And like, it wasn't, get... like, your mom, it wasn't, like, a girlfriend, it was, like, any woman in particular? No, nah, it's probably, like, a mix of, like, yeah, girlfriend and movies, like, um, just subtle, like, things, like, Alfred Hitchcock movies and stuff like that, Michael Myers, you know, it's just, like, but at the time, yeah, when I was having a, I just had my kid, and I was, like, there's a song on the record called In a Heartbeat that I was doing all by myself, all the instruments, but then I met these, well, I met Mo and reconnected with Carlos. So, like, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, my bad. Uh, I forgot what I was fucking talking about. <laughs> I, I, thought we, I thought we turned off, so I was like, oh, oh, fucking no. just forgot. I turned off my brain. So, you. You were thinking after you had your kid for... Yeah, in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Yeah, it's on the record. And uh, that's just what I was doing on my own, and it's, it's about my kid and, like, yeah, like girlfriend scenarios and stuff. But uh, And we needed a name, and I was having a lot of nightmares at that time, like, specifically every single night at the same time, no matter what. And then uh, just watching a lot of movies and stuff, and they liked the name. I don't remember if we had anything else. I don't think so. Yeah. But Nightmare, I wanted in it. And I'm a huge, like, yeah, Alfred Hitchcock fan and shit, so. Well, Nothing yeah. against, yeah, women whatsoever. <laughs> I, mean. I was just wondering who who maybe had sparked but, the uh, idea. I, yeah, a lot of people, I mean, I love the name. And, uh, yeah, it was a lot generating of, around the word. Yeah, the the whole point of anything was, I mean, and anything you came up with, like endless nightmare, fucking whatever you could think of, was just taken. And then there's a Lifetime movie that came out uh we had the name last first. year, yeah, called Her Worst Nightmare. Dang. So like that kind of sucks, <laughs> but whatever. If they, you know, if they I'll, do part two, you saw that Lifetime movie, right? That's what you named your Yeah, name? <laughs> right. <laughs> How was the movie? Have you seen it? No, I no, haven't. Yeah, Maybe you should do research. <laughs> I know. I I want to. That'd be funny. But yeah, if there's a sequel, I mean, we're open to, to do know, the soundtrack. Yeah, we'll do it all. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. So when you guys released this album earlier this year, what was one of the first singles? Let's play that to introduce everybody to her worst nightmare. Or your favorite track? On uh, I think it was the first song, the "Found in a Pool of Blood." Found All right, in a pool we'll talk of more blood. about what that is about, obviously. But <laughs> here it is, the song first. Oh yeah.
What's going on? I'm Morgan Danielle. I'm Luca Blaze from the Metal Experience in Chicago, Illinois. And you're listening to Small Town Mentality Podcast with your hosts, Ben and Austin. Hey, this is Pete, Tanner, Zach, Pat, and we're Bloodletter, and you're listening to The Metal Experience! All right, we are The Metal Experience. Once again, I am Morgan Danielle with Luco Blaze, hanging out Once with again. One, yeah, once again. Twice okay. again. Okay, then. We are hanging out Three with... Three times a lady. Her worst nightmare. Uh, that was found in a pool of blood. Could you only imagine? So who's writing the lyrics for these bad boys? Uh, uh, well, they're a mixture. We all, yeah, all three of us write them. For this one, for this one, I wrote it. Those were Mo's lyrics. Yeah, that was just a voice. <laughs> what inspired the lyrics? That's all. Uh, Mo. A lot of anger. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the song's about murdering someone, you know. And then being found in a pool of blood <laughs> by someone, by like their loved one and shit and stuff. Yeah. The lyrics are fucking awesome. I yeah. never knew them until I was typing them for the, for the book. And like they're, every word is just fucking awesome. And you know, and, like as a stranger, like I didn't know what they were and shit. So I was seeing it for the first time and I'm like, holy fuck. <laughs> Like, real cool shit going on that no one else really does that I've seen for all, like, the music. You know, I've been, like, listening to metal forever. But, yeah. Um, yeah, those... The lyrics to that song are, yeah, super fucked up. Those lyrics are <laughs> fucking brutal. I had to, like, use a lot of, I guess you say, empathy for that one. Like, just trying to convey a feeling behind what needs to come out and how it needs to be said because you just gave me free range on that one i was like what do you want me to do he's like dude just sing it and i was like i only got you channel your inner demons i read that shit for like a full night for like a solid like three hours and then we practiced and it came out and i was like what do you guys think and they're like fucking awesome now what's the the process like writing the music is it uh you know, start with the music and then lyrics, or do you guys, like, have some lyrics and then kind of fit them to music, or how do you guys... I usually fit into what they, yeah, they I'll, put out. I'll usually come up with, like, some guitar riffs, j Edge drums, and then we show them to Carlos. We show yeah, them to Carlos. we jam. Yeah. Like, we just jam. It's a we process. don't fucking send stuff back and forth. Yeah. I don't... We've He's never sent me a riff, you know, yeah, and yeah, I've yeah. never sent him drums or nothing like that. So, I mean, we just sweat it out. We got ideas and shit, you know, but we don't, I never emailed them. I write a lot of it, too, on guitar, but, um, yeah, we don't do nothing like, you know, like that. It's all natural and shit, just sweating it out still. The, the writing process musically is all just come up with stuff and just jam it and <laughs> turn yep. it into a song. Pretty much. Yeah, we'll sit Hell there, yeah, back man. and forth, play. These guys will play for a couple minutes. What do you think? You start from scratch. Uh, start throwing ideas in. We're all there together. Like, yeah, we have a ton of shit, man. We got um, the EP coming up, hopefully January, like five new songs. And we just put um, we put the, the 10 song album out March 15th. So another five in January. And then we're eight into the next full length. Holy Damn. shit! For You're next, really chugging along. Yeah, yep. ne- next October. So it's like making up for lost time. But we didn't really fuck up, like for not having anything proper recorded. You know, like we all had other bands and shit happens and stuff. So, like I said, we there's other CDs out there, but they don't look good. Yeah, we had a we had a fucking a little hiatus for a couple of years because, uh, like me, I, I ended up like leaving the band. I had to work and shit. Yeah, and then I, I did didn't vocals have time. for like a short time. Mo was fucking in it. He went insane, shaved his head. It was yeah. brutal. <laughs> yeah, Mo. Fuck, we were a two piece for a long, like, what, two years, maybe? Yeah. I'm not sure, but yeah, Mo was uh, vocals and guitar. That, that shit was nuts. <laughs> it was real crazy. And then yeah, one, yeah, awesome. we played instrumental shows. Yeah, we've done that. And, and yeah, everyone, you know, everyone always has fun and shit, so, which is cool. But yeah, there were times, yeah, Carlos fucking up one time, so 
he just quit jamming with us for a little bit. But he's back. Mo now. fucking up before. <laughs> yeah, I fucked up a couple once. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, the recording, where are you guys re- doing all the recording at? The Nook. Yeah, yeah the, for, the, oh, for wait, the EP yeah, was the Nook, but the, EP, but, yeah. um, the other... Our, our other album, Matt. our first album that we put out, we recorded with Matt. Yeah, the full yeah. length that's out everywhere now um, was with Matt Motto, who did nice. Act of Destruction nice. and who plays in Disona and killed it on that record. And it was super, uh, it was like, you know, a long process and shit, but it was awesome. Like, everything turned out just fantastic. And then it sounds, re- you know, we couldn't be happier with it, but then we went architects of ruin to the nook and um nick did a killer job on that so we did the ep with him this time you're an architect yeah dude what don't yeah look, luco is the singer of the great architects of glasses ruin. fool you i throw down right <laughs> uh fuck yeah so now you guys are recording the five song nice. is it all done yeah it's done yeah, i just gave it to recording. you except the intro we oh, have okay. it but you guys are um, releasing it, like, officially, you said? Yeah, physically. Hopefully uh, January. Everything, yeah, digitally, all that shit. You could you could even play our uh, album that's out right now on jukeboxes if you're out getting fucked up. Yeah, man, we're on a jukebox. Yeah, just yeah. Up. so that shit, you know, we're trying to push it as hard as we can. Which is awesome. You go How did you get on a jukebox? Just through uh, AMI directly there's on a, AMI. There's a jukebox up front here. We can. Dude, put you can play it across the street right now. Hell yeah, yeah. play yeah. that shit wherever. That's fucking Canada. Awesome. It's like that North America. The worst nightmare that shit. But yeah, just fun it. shit like that. We're trying to you know give it anyone willing to listen to it. And I remember when I asked you, you're like, man, it took fucking forever. Yeah, it <laughs> took like ten weeks or something. Damn. Let's play another track because I've got more questions about the recording part. And then there's a lot of music and we want to feature a lot. So what's the next track that you want to play? None fucker. Ooh. Ooh. All right. <laughs> track five. None fucker. Okay. Here we go. I haven't seen you in church lately. <laughs> well, there's not much sense in my going to church. <laughs>
I'm a dude, and I'm inviting you to join me on a podcast about brews. Does that include stouts? Yes. Yes, of course it includes stouts. Like I was saying, join us every Saturday on the journey hey, hey, into... Hey, co- wait a minute. Do you, do you guys do anything about, like, IPAs? Yes. Stuff like that? Yes, of, yes, of, yes, we do IPAs. Okay. It's, okay. It, yes. Anyway... Join us on the Journey into Comics Network for Brews with Dudes. Whoa, whoa, hey, I'm, hey, do you, have you guys ever, do you care if I bring some Zima on? Th- yes, I care if you bring Zima. Zima doesn't count. Zima, oh. Zima, Dr. Dongo. Anyway, join us every Saturday for a podcast that delves into the craft brew world. That's Adriana. This is Noe. We're Autumn Leaves, and you're listening to The Mystery. All right, we are back with the Metal Experience. We're at Danielle Luco Place, talking it up with her worst nightmare tonight. That was none fucker. What a jam. <laughs> none fucker. Uh, none I, as in the religious none. And you and... Yeah. I, I approve. Oh, yeah. Nice. So what got you so pissed off that you are... Anyone go to nuns? Catholic school? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nah. Uh, nah. I was no. Nah, that's not the reason for this song. <laughs> <laughs> nah, truthfully, man. No, nah, that's a brutal ass song, man. Um, to be honest, again, like, I was just going over in my head, like, just fucking listening to each riff individually. You know, like, man, this is some brutal shit, so I had to come up with some things. And I was just thinking, you know, what's something you haven't written about? What's something that you can write about that'll, you know, open up your own horizon for writing yourself? So I was like, fuck it, dude. Let's call this Nunfucker. Nun, nunfuck it, dude. <laughs> right? I was like, let's call this shit Nunfucker. And, you know, honestly, I wrote this song, over, again, like shit, over overnight, probably like two, three nights, getting everything finalized and shit. took me probably three days to write that song. Just get crazy. But I just thought about the like you know the most brutal shit that I can think of, and you know in a way I in, in my own way I that's kind of shit as meaning like I wrote the song as in and I tried doing it like a third person thing, but really it's I thought about what I would do. Like the li- the <laughs> lyrics to this record are insane. Like they're super cool. Like full moon fishing is just about yeah. losing your shit while you're just trying to like. From what I get, like, chill in the woods, like, you go to the woods to fucking relax, and there's joggers and people trying to fish where you're trying to fish, you know? And, like, the way everything comes together, it's just, like, cool. It's kind of like a story, you know? I'm, like, what it, like every time I typed one out, it just got, like, cooler. So, like, that's, like, I made, if you go on our YouTube, there's lyric videos for every song. And, like, after I did one to promote the album... And then I'm, like, reading it, and I'm like, fuck, I got to do them all. You know, so all ten tracks are up there, and, and we need more subscribers on that shit. I'll subscribe right now. So, Hell yeah. <coughs> oh, we well, actually lost my voice or something. Have a little Did <laughs> any of you guys need therapy after writing this album? Because there's some, there's some dark tones to this. There's a lot of, I mean, you <laughs> said you pictured yourself doing some of this, so I'm worried about your mental well-being. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, should, I probably should have got that years ago, yeah, but it's all done with now. Uh, I'm already on, you know, some other level shit now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I, I mean, that's just a way to help me write. I sometimes picture myself as in what would I do in that situation. It, didn't you say the other day someone gave you shit? Uh, well, at uh, where I work, I, um, gave, oh, yeah. I I gave this guy one of our CDs, and I was like, hey, check us out, you know. Um, he said he knows, like, an engineer for Lincoln Hall, so I was like, shit, try to get this in. I gave him our album, and he actually gave the album to the guy, and his wife ended up reading it. And the first song they read was A Gruesome Farewell, and that song itself is... I was watching uh, one night, watching some uh, murder mystery shit, you know, on on TV, and there was uh, sad to say it was about a little girl who was playing on her on her front lawn. She ends up getting kidnapped by some homeless fucking dude, and he unfortunately raped and killed her. But that inspired me to write a song, and I'm just not because I think it's like fucking cool or anything, but only because that's a message that I'm trying to get out there with that song. You know, like. 
this is something that can happen, whether if you look at it, whichever way you look at it, but that's my message behind it. If you come ask me what the hell that song about, I'll tell you this exact same shit. Yeah. You know, it's just about, you know, a message on, you know, the world's fucked up and bad shit happens. And, yeah, what's you know, more fucked up is that, like, you would get shit than the person who did it or aired it or anything. It was just, like, kind of funny. Oh, yeah. But cool. Yeah, that guy told someone me. someone actually looked he, at our shit. He, he told me, you should warn your, you know, your audience before you sing that song. I was like, well... I don't know if they know what it's really about. I'm up here screaming and doing lows, but I mean, if they ever yeah, have a well, question. Yeah, what the fuck do you think's happening? <laughs> like, what do you think we're singing about? Have you considered just doing a, like a second run of hard copies of the album and putting like a huge parental advisory sticker th- on it? I have them, and I got, I got stickers. threatened um, by the RIAA, if that's what? them, whatever the fuck they are. Recording industry, something, yeah, or whatever it is, yeah, the acronym. But yes, putting a parental advisory on your album yeah. is like I got the image or whatever it's is copyrighted. So, yeah, that's fucked up. Uh, I thought it, that was used. To I I had people. extras. I had extras, and I put them online, like Facebook or something. And I was like, hey, if anyone could use them, I had a shitload of extras. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, if anyone wants them for free, I, like rolls of them. Yeah, I have one roll. Uh, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, if, thanks. <laughs> and I'm like, if anyone wants them, just let me know, you know, and I got a message that uh, just the image. But then you go on eBay and there are shirts, you know, you could be wearing one now and no one says anything. So I don't know what the fuck. Assholes. Yeah, I don't know what the whole uh, about cor- rule is. Corporate America, bro. But yeah, I couldn't put one on there. So that's what you get. That's what you it, get. There's a song called Nunfucker. <laughs> and found in a pool of blood, and, and there's a song called. You know, Motherfuck. you could, you could make your own stickers, Jason. I know. Well, <laughs> not to say that's what I did, no, but I, I know, didn't but not do that. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. That's but funny. a lot of the songs are fun too. Like Destination Death is crazy. It's just about a plane crash. Fishing is about just trying to relax and people not letting you. You know, even when you go home and you want five minutes, you can't relax. You want to kill people. So, so listen your, to this shit. Your album is misinterpreted as being no everyone. No, it's brutal. Yeah, like no, it's <laughs> brutal. But like, I think and the songs from are the, like what a couple of the about. people that I had heard feedback from, it was more of like they thought that these ideas came from you. Like this is what you envisioned. However, this was something that you have like saw or envisioned sort of, sort or read of. about. In a w- in a way that sparked the idea. Well, it's no, not like, like sort of. Well, like the fucked up thing, like if he was watching that show when he wrote it, um keep it under right. control. gruesome. I mean, he obviously didn't write anything before watching that. So, bitch at TV. Well, right, because it, it they put came, that idea in his head, and he couldn't come from up with it. Like something that you kind of seen. Like yeah, it's, it's a I visual mean, going interpretation. down a brutal ass route. So that that yeah. song's about that. Nothing literal. That though. personal event. That like I the name, like nowadays, like TV. whatever the fuck's going on with. But everything. Whatever else you is hear on the news, head. you know, like with women and all that. The yeah. name. I'm pretty. The name up. is just awful, for the moment. I think. Well, but I just, we've been around since 2009, so fuck it. I just think it's hilarious listening to to people complain about like. A lyrical content being so so graphic and disgusting for some bands, and yet these horror movies that are watched, or what's on the news, or TV, everything that's interpreted visually is worse than what you're listening to. The news is frightening. It is uh, a, I, absolutely a lot of the stuff that that's actually blame reality. the media. I don't so watch the news because it's all just like. Uh, the world's blowing yeah. up. Yeah, everything's on uh, fire. Yeah, everything you're gonna is. die. It's all meant but to fucking scare you. I'm a huge horror though. fan too, and uh, and like Saw, the Saw movies, shit like that. I mean, for me, that's a little too much. Even you know, like I don't like watching that. That's a little extreme and shit. These are just words. We're not yeah. making you fucking watch it with your kids. <laughs> yeah. We can, just don't give a shit. See, that's the different <laughs> thing too. Is like when we're watching movies. And, like, we just saw the, the new Rambo movie, and people were getting beheaded, and I was laughing. Nice. You know, it's That's like, you. Right. That's your problem. Like, that shit's badass in a movie. Like, in real life, though, it's like, oh, my God. But, like, it's a fucking movie, man. This is, like, that's kind of like an art 
And with the fucking metal music, yeah, that's a part of people's brutal. fucking yeah. life. Like, you, think, I mean, not in America. You're playing brutal music. You fucking back it up with brutal fucking lyrics, man. Of course. Any, any Cannibal Corpse song, yeah. any Cannibal Corpse yeah. song is just fucking. Nobody likes just death. turn the limit past. Favorite the is I Come Blood, dude. Yeah. Those guys are fucking brutal. Yeah, anyone in any metal band ever went to awake for somebody and fucking cried. You know, like we like our death and our metal. Not in real life, you know, like people, that bitch. Yeah, people can misinterpret as bitching. much as they want. I mean, all they have to do is fucking ask me. I can give them an explanation. Yeah, because we got a lot more shit to the say. The best I can. Like this EP's fucking killer. So. Will I stop writing like that? Who knows? I hope not. No. Well, let's listen <laughs> to won't. another track. Let's get more can, into Can this. I pick a track? Yeah, go for it, bro. Destination Death. Next stop, ocean floor. You nice. said that's about a plane crash? Yeah, with the intro by yes. Carlos. I, uh, on this, a spoken I word. Wrote that shit. I was just thinking, hey, man, write a song about a fucking plane crashing. What's the best way you can do it? And this is what I came up with. <coughs> well, let's fucking do it. Her he was nightmare. watching what the fuck's that movie? And this, this CD is... Uh, Snakes, on Snakes on a plane. Not that one. <laughs> this is a uh, self-titled CD. The Denzel correct? one. Yeah, it is. Yes, yes, yes it is. What Denzel flick on a plane? Where the plane goes upside down. Oh, that fucking flight. Wasn't flight. he on Snakes on a Plane too, though? <laughs> no, wanted to ask him. Samuel L. Jackson was yeah. Snakes on yeah, a Plane. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker. Wait, who did you say? Denzel Washington. Oh, shit. Oh. I was right, though. Oh, yeah, again, I'm burned. Training day. I got a funny story about Snakes on a Plane. When I was going to see Snakes on a Plane in the movie theater, York Theater, right down the street here, I had a, a handsaw in the back of my car, and it was me and my two buddies. And my one buddy in the back picked this handsaw up, and he's like, what the fuck? And he slapped the fucking the passenger in my car in the face with it, right? Just, you know, we're fucking whatever. It's a fucking handsaw. It was like my grandpa's or something crazy. I don't know why it was in the back of my dad's car. But we were going to see snakes on a plane. So we pull in, and we're getting in for free because my buddy worked there, and he was going to let us in the back. And uh, nice. all of a sudden, this fucking cop pulls up, and he's like, hey, do you guys just get out of that gold, gold so-and-so car? I'm like, uh, yeah, it's my dad's. And he's like, put your fucking hands up. <laughs> We're like, uh, what the fuck? <laughs> this fucking cop pulled a gun on us, and he, he's like, there's a report that you guys were waving around a shotgun. I'm like, dude, this is Elmhurst. What the fuck are you talking about? So, yeah, I got guns pulled on me going to see snakes on a plane. Because my buddy picked up a handsaw and someone called it in saying it was a shotgun. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. Bogus. But then afterwards, I watched Snakes on a Plane <laughs> because my buddy who was like waiting at the back door, like saw the cop and, like do that. And then he like he had the door open and was like waiting for us. Like, he was watching us. And then he saw the cop like pull the gun and he just closed the door and walked away. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh uh-uh. uh. He's like, I had weed in my pocket, so I was not going <laughs> to. Right. But yeah, Elmhurst. Snakes on a Plane. Mean Streets Got of Elmhurst. Mean Streets of Elmhurst. <laughs> <laughs> Waving around. Elmhurst. around. Wave around a fucking handsaw. It gets mistaken for a shotgun. I had a gun pulled on me. <laughs> so, fuck the police is what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say. Coming straight from yeah, the man. ground. This is your captain speaking. We are now over the Pacific Ocean. Destination death. Next stop, ocean floor.
don't expect that type of language at Denny's, but not here. Well, that's too freaking bad. You hear me? Because we're throwing it back to Morgan Luco on the Metal Experience. All right, that was Destination Death. Next stop, Ocean Floor. And you said this was about a plane going down. Any specific plane or just thinking of a fucked up situation, a plane going down and... Pretty much just, yeah, like fucked up ass situation, plane going down. It's more about Stars what goes through right your head. That. Yeah, pretty much I threw yeah, myself. words are crazy. Threw myself in that seat, just thought of shit that, hey, what would I want going down before I fucking die and plummet to the fucking floor, ocean yeah. floor, man. Dude, that's a bad, I really like that. T- that's why I, I want to play that one next, because I think that's my favorite title, because it's like Destination Death, Next Stop Ocean Floor. Like, dude, that's fucking awesome. I was like, since Hell yeah, I just pretty much was like, man, how can I name this? And I just threw it in my head, hey, you know, fucking let it be. Yeah. As if they're announcing it, it's on their ticket and shit. Yeah, right? Before the plane takes off, hey, destination death, next stop, ocean floor. Yeah, that's badass. Keep your seatbelts unbuckled. <laughs> <laughs> we scripted that for f- like three days. Yeah, oh my God. For three days. For three days. Shake like, it, we tried to get that right. <laughs> what do you mean? The intro to that song, if like, yeah, yeah they, when you hear it, it took forever the to intro figure out to what that to say. Is me, yeah, oh, because oh, oh. there's a couple samples, but that one's him. I'm gonna have to hear it again. Where but, did yeah. all, like the movie quotes and everything come from? Like, what? Where did you get your little excerpts in, in the excerpts? Yeah, yeah. the nonfucker is Night of Living Dead, uh, which a lot of people like recognized, which was cool because like. Or I just told you, like, it's in the first couple minutes when they're at the cemetery and shit. They're coming for you, Bob. Right? <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, the, the opening track, the found in the Pool of Blood's a mashup of, of, of like, Stooges shit. <laughs> yeah. So, Three like, Stooges. <laughs> yeah. Like, Niagara Falls. Remember that episode? Slowly, I turn. <laughs> yeah. So, when he's on a murderous rampage, that's, that's what that's from. And then there's another one in a in a heartbeat that uh, we'll play a little bit later. Yeah, and which also isn't necessarily public domain, so it's it's in there. <laughs> so yeah, he's legend. <laughs> Not necessarily public domain. Yeah. How different was it recording with Matt and then going to record with Nick? Like, what did you guys find to be more? More or less uh, anything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, like, I was trying to think. Of. As for guitars, it was the same process, you know. Like just, it was a, it was similar. Chug it I out. Mean, I don't know how it was with drums or vocals, but for guitar, it was the same thing. Just going in there, doing it riff by riff. And guitars yeah. were done done first. No. No. Drums no. Were done drums. First. Yeah. But you, like, you I, were there for drums, and you just nah. You just Jay just went by himself. What? And you just played by ear, like yeah. Yeah, like with the record, with the the album that's out. Yeah, we did um, scratch tracks because each song we didn't know when we were writing. Each song has like, fucking fifteen tempos in it, so everything you know, and it's two seconds, whatever. You know, a lot of bands do it. Who cares? I'm just saying we didn't know that. You don't know what tempo is when you're just jamming. Yeah. Yeah. So like, it was a little bit of a process, like the album, but. So the EP was, but we did the same thing. He, you know, Mo comes over and we sit there and just tap each riff out like by mouth and figure out, you know, and, but for the EP that's coming out, I went there with only that in my head and just played like how we did the Architects of Ruin. I just went there with the riffs in my head and the click track, you know, so no scratches, nothing. So like... The EP, like the Nook, Nick is the shit. Yeah, he's like, cool. So is Matt. Yeah, I gave yeah, Matt cool. a, a lot of shout outs in Disona, Third Killer, but Nick is awesome at the Nook. Yeah, I mean, you know. Oh, yeah. From the Architects record, came out fantastic. The, uh, the first time I went in there, I, I knocked out three songs on vocals, and for some reason that day I couldn't get the S, you know, the S sound at the end of some of my words. And I was going to go back and record just like just the word just to get to pronunciate the, you know, the full word in there. And he's like, no, wait, hold on. And he just like 
pulled like an S sound from somewhere else and just fucking added them in like this guy's a magician. Studio magic, yeah. Dude, and then like, yep. but then like the second time when I went in to do the last two songs, my S's were like <laughs> insane. I don't know what was. You learn how to pronounce I, S's? Yeah. Finally? <laughs> finally. Fuck yeah. <laughs> well, that helps me. Yeah, nice. so. Um, Great. But like with your tempo, you say if the tempo keeps changing you play to a click track yeah i'll just tell him like fucking give me you know you know whatever it is give me 200 until i stop and then i'll be like dude cut me off and then you just like for those five tracks man and they're all fantastic and i didn't really fuck up because i was there like like maybe three hours i mean i was there at nine in the morning and i was home by like one so, I mean, it, it was awesome. And then we just got done. Uh, September 1st was Carlos's last day. And we got a lot of videos and stuff coming up. It's just, uh, I, I do everything from the fucking social media and the YouTube to Spotify, everything, you know? So, like, everything's like a little bit of a process. Well, and get architects and on shit. fucking on jukebox, this son of a bitch. Motherfucker. <laughs> I do that shit for nightmare. <laughs> I know that's what I'm saying, dude. For architects, right? You know how to do it. Ten weeks later, we'll be up there. Yeah, but yeah, both studios are great. So anyone around here, I mean, I haven't been to many, but like I said, after we did the architects one, man, Nick was just automatic, and the whole thing was over and done with, and like whatever three months but that's only because we're not in a hurry because we just put out a record like that came out march 15th i tracked drums april like 20th. 6th or something oh yeah it was 4, 420, 420 yeah. yeah so a month later you were already in the studio with new music yeah april 20th yeah five tunes that's insane. and then we got seven or eight i think eight if we think a little more for yet, uh yet to come yeah to track and like March, so the and new then stuff, put out next October. The new stuff that you've made from this album, is there any differences? Have you guys gone? Uh, no, a lot direction? of it's a lot of it's actually the the first track, the intro. It's instrumental, and we really wanted to do something. There's a lot of bands we like that have an intro track that's just you just sit there and listen. You know, no singing. Like Hell Awaits opens like that. Yeah, it builds up anticipation. Yeah, and I mean, like, Dark Intentions by The Haunted on a, made me do it was, like, probably the main inspiration. But, yeah, the, the intro's all, like, brand new. It's only two riffs, but it's cool because it's an EP, you know, so it, it's the only new thing, no words in it. And then the rest is older shit and stuff we've been sitting on. Like, we have 19 songs on and off, but then with these other eight, you know, it's like what you know, probably like thirty right now, whatever. Over the course of ten years it don't sound like much, but like we really fucking everyone that listens to it and comes to a show and shit, even without a basis says like a basis wouldn't do anything or if anything it would hurt us. You know, so like I feel like we're doing the right thing for the moment. But you record bass on the scenes. Mo yeah, Mo does it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't do none on this E P. Like, that was all him and shit. Last time it was just, it was a lot of trips to the studio and stuff. So when I could go, I just did the bass. They were like my songs anyway and shit before I met them. Yeah, but our newer shit, like, or even the stuff we're going to record after this, it's coming out pretty good. Yeah, the new stuff beyond yeah. this EP, the other seven or eight tracks we got uh, to record soon, right after this comes out, um, are... Totally different, old hardcore like influence. Cause like we come from a crazy like hardcore background. Like Carlos likes like who's your favorite? Under Dude, Oath, right? Honestly, old Under Oath and shit. What started me off with vocals was old school Under Oath with Dallas Taylor, Cries Aren't of the Past, Act Christian of Depression. Band? Christian death metal. That's crazy. Cries of the Past, you yeah, Act of Depression by Under Oath. Or... Christian death metal band. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> but That's just I, what got him started. I, hey, I, hey, I, I the day, the too. How he, yeah, he pronunciates yeah. everything, his highs and lows. Like, honestly, once I heard, the first song I actually heard from them was Cries of the Past. And when I heard that, I was just like, man, I can see myself trying this. And I tried it, and I just fell in love with it. Yeah, like the new shit we come from, yeah, like Old, old Under Oath, like Atreyu, you know, Bleeding Through, like Murder AD, like the old, like, Oz, Fest, 04, 05, you know, Black Dahlia is still around and shit between the bear to me. 
uh, their other band, Glass Casket. Hell yeah. Glass Casket. Uh, Slayer, you know, yeah. but like old hardcore shit. So the new stuff, and Mo, he's in a, like, what, two black metal bands? Yeah, Oakland Infinium, Sacramentium. Yeah, and Short Story Inc. is the yeah, shit too, Inc. his Punk other band. band. And, uh, but ours, yeah, he still manages to, like, I'm always like, man, you know, what are we going to be playing? But he comes with nightmare shit, you know? Like, when we play, we're fucking... Yeah, it's yeah, always going to yeah. be our shit. Yeah, it's our own song Yeah. Even my buddy put it on in Architects, and he never heard it. And he's like, is this you? Like, he knew I was playing drums on it and shit. So, like, I was like, it's cool. But, like, when we play together, you know, you fucking notice it and shit. It's distinct. Yeah. So, fuck yes. a bass player. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's... Let's play a new track. You got me all hyped up. Let's let's play something off of the upcoming EP. Let's debut it. Do we have a title for the EP? Not yet. Not yeah, yet. we do. <laughs> Carlos, Fuck you, Mo. You <laughs> Hell yeah, we do. Yeah. What um, is it? Ominous. <laughs> what is it? Oh, yeah, I remember now. <laughs> ominous. The Ominous EP, because the fucking next full length is going to annihilate this one. Yeah, you know? it's like kind of an oh, yeah. Ideally, yeah. so... Yeah, some other shit's coming, so that's like the perfect name. Well, and the track that we're going moment. to play. Skinned and Fucked, please. <laughs> Skinned and Fucked, please. <laughs> yep. So it's called Skinned and Fucked. Jason's just asked nicely to And you say please it, at so. the end of it. <laughs> so we'll talk about what this means when we come back, but here's some more brutal tunes. Fuck your joy, fuck your joy. Experience. 
All right, we are back. I am Morgan Danielle with Luco Blaze, still talking with her worst nightmare, and that was skinned and fucked. Whoa, off the upcoming EP that the band will release in January. So that was a sneak peek at what's to come. It's fucking brutal. So what inspired hey. skinned and fucked? Well, skinned and fucked is one of those Forever Setting Sun songs. Jay wrote that song. I didn't really take part in the writing, but the I music. learned it. Yeah. Uh, Carlos wrote the lyrics for it, so he knows more about it. Yeah, it's, a, it's an old school ass song, again, that Jay wrote, but, you know, again, it came off of Forever Setting Sun, so I just had to throw my little touch and brutalize the shit out of the lyrics, because, you know, they weren't mine to begin with, so I created my own thing there. Just kind of, again, just jammed to the song and just thought of the most brutal shit that I can think of, and at the time, I was going through some shit. So I was just like, you know, let's incorporate some of this anger you got going on and pent-up rage and fucking put it in there. Let's write a song about it since you don't want to tell the person how you're feeling. Brutal. Is it about skinning and fucking people? Yeah, literally. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Cool. I can't wait to to see the lyrics, so. (laughs) Well, Luco, it's about that time. Are you ready? I was born ready, motherfucker. Now it's time for... Hey man, look what I found! Only on the Metal Experience. All right, this week and every week, this segment is always brought to you by our friends at Imprint Recordings. Your music, your imprint. Visit imprintrecordings.com for more information for all your recording needs. This week we have a band from Grand Rapids, Michigan. The band Vest- Vestigial. 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 I think it's vestigial. V-E-S-T-I-G-I-A-L. I apologize if I am pronouncing that, uh, you know, not correctly. Uh, we have a twofer for you. This one's dethroned. And then The Blood. Blood of the Wolf. And the, both those are off the upcoming album, Crown of Serpents, which comes out November 2nd. Morgan, let's fucking do it.
I will my link check. Don't find us on the Netflix page. Stuff, metal, docking, and banquet chicken. All right, we are back with the metal experience, hanging out in the back of Fitz's Spare Keys. We just heard, which was this segment's always sponsored and brought to you by Imprint Recordings, your music, your imprint. Visit ImprintRecordings.com for more information for all your recording needs. This band was from Grand Rapids, Michigan. We heard Dethroned and Blood of the Wolf. The band name Vest- Vestigial? Vest- Vestigal? Vestigial. I'm going to say Vestigial. I fucking, I don't know. Fucking crazy metal names. V-E-S-T-I-G-I-A-L. And that's off the upcoming album, Crown of Serpents. And that's out uh, November 2nd. Check them out. Give them a like on Facebook. Whew. We are back. Rocking out. Morgan? You her had some, worst nightmare. We were rocking out with her worst nightmare. Morgan, you had uh, some stuff we were doing. Uh, you mean in an interview? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I'm playing the drink the so beer game. Back to, you know, I've been slamming models, bro. I've been slamming models for the last Don't two months. Don't forget what you're talking <laughs> about like I did. <laughs> two months, I've just been fucking... <laughs> models, babe! Oh! Just fucking going crazy, man. Right? Oh, cheers, man. All right. Well... Aside from Luco being a weirdo, we are back. Just Double slamming experience. Models, bruh. Uh, so you guys have played We should quite pick up a case of Modelo on the way home. You have just putting that out there. The smartest no thing he said all day. We just came back with like three cases of new Glarus oh, for him. Which is also good, but it's they're not no Modelo. Models. They're not, you know they're what, not Luco? my Models. Go fuck yourself. Ah. And we're back with Her Worst Nightmare. <laughs> Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the, the shows that you guys have played recently. You've, you've played a lot, including a baby shower. You guys yeah, played she was a cool. fucking baby shower? Yeah. yeah. Who's baby shower? Nick and Tess's baby shower. Wait, Tess, like, from around here? Nick yeah, like, Tess? yeah, like everyone knows. Yeah, no, Nick uh, used to jam with Mo and Short Story, Inc. Yeah. His drummer, Whoa. yeah, Mo's other band. That's fucking hilarious. I know Tess from... A girl I played softball with. It was like her best friend. Oh, okay. She went to a party? I don't fucking know. Oh, okay. Are we no, I'm saying was she the right there at a party? There's only one Tess. Tess Bennett, yeah. Yep. Who, there's only one Tess. Nick, Who else is called Nick Tess? Yeah. Who the fuck's named Nick? Yeah, right? Who's Who fuck fucking named Nick? Nick? Yeah. 
No, so yeah, that's our funny. once in a while bass player. I know her. <laughs> so you guys played her baby shower? Yeah, that's that awesome. was the shit, man. Yeah. They yeah, were awesome. They have that baby. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. There's always pictures of her with like her belly, her baby bump, and like death metal shirts. I'm like, fuck yeah, this chick's awesome. <laughs> yeah, she's cute, man. Yeah, yeah she's, she's cool. all, she obviously she wasn't there partying yeah, no, with the us, baby, but the baby's born. Baby's but it was yellow. a brutal shower, man. <laughs> it was awesome. It was pretty not violent, but it got. You know, people had fun and shit. So you played a fucking baby shower. Were there, like, people, like, dressed all nice, and then you guys are playing fucking... No, it was more laid back. Not By, by then, the actual yeah, yeah. normal baby shower. Like, the shower first half of the shower was traditional, then the second half was all bands. Yeah. And it got a little dark. So See, that's you know, fucking awesome. Come, like, 8 o'clock. Yeah. There, were more, there were more bands just besides yeah, you guys? Yeah, there was, uh, there was Her Nightmare... Our Tenebr- boys, Tenebrism. Yeah, Tenebrism uh, played too. Yeah. Oh yeah, you know them, Tenebrism. the drummer. Yeah, uh, they've been on our show. Yeah, they're the shit. They were a killer. But the drummer, he plays in that uh, blank standard. Blank standard. I yeah. recognized them. Yeah, when we jammed with them. That's awesome. Uh huh. Yeah. He was awesome. Yeah, they were. They didn't have yeah, a they singer. I think they're in between one now. Next time you see him, just go. Hah! Give him the Arnold scream. <laughs> <laughs> He'll know what you're talking about. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Fucking I'll Luco. Sure but from those ashes was there. They're good yeah, buddies. Yeah. I see them every oh, show. They'll I be go on to. our show yeah. coming up next month. Yeah, those are cool. Sweet. Yeah, they're all yeah. young and they're fucking. They're killing it. A lot of merch and you know music and shit. Luco? So Brandon from Tenderism. And my other band, Sacramento Blade. Blade. What's up? Yeah, and my other band. I thought he was whispering shit about too. me. That's he plays drums oh, in a band with you too. No, I play drums in a different band. Yeah, uh, he, he his used band, my drums. Yeah. Yeah. His, kit, his shells and stuff. As well. Black metal that, shit, that coarse that paint, all that. Like, they're, they're <laughs> badass, yeah. Like, he they fucking a snapped. Baby shower. Right? I love it. It was cool. But yeah, he went right from drums uh, to guitar, man. Yeah, it was a good show. We just played Exit um, after Riot Fest yeah, that was two a weeks ago. Show, yeah. I just put some videos up. I heard that turnout so, was fucking... Bad exit too. was fucking man for two in the morning or whatever midnight yep. on a Sunday. You would not think, you know. I tell everybody Anthony's the shit, like he hooks us up. But it was also yeah. right after. Uh, yeah, yeah, Riot it was Fest. after Riot Fest. Yeah, so I mean, you think it was like a lot of people are going there. Any too. big name band artists there too? Uh, exit or Riot Fest? Uh, exit. No, well, uh, Crusadist. Played yeah, last. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah, wearing their shirt. Them. Fuck yep, yeah. Yep. I just did merch for them too. Stickers and shit. But they're awesome. Yeah, they uh, they played. That was a rough night. Who the <laughs> fuck else? <laughs> Who else jammed? Uh, I can't remember right this second. Oh, it was this, this two-piece? Uh, like oh, shit. Band? Coma. Yeah, Coma. Yeah, the, yeah they, they, they're in between drummers, but just riff, you know, they oh. just had riff after riff. Jason, ass. sounds like you can jump in on another band. Yeah, right. Man, I asked them why they don't have one, but I just started a, another band. <laughs> oh, so my God. I forgot to tell you earlier. Well, oh, I'll t- talk my to you after. God. Yeah. But, yeah, they were real good. They were awesome. But, but uh, I just put two videos up. Of a uh, part of the collective at Miss Right and Beheaded. Fuck yeah. So, again, yes! subscribe to our YouTube. I just Please, did. if you haven't yet. Yeah, because I, I want to name something. that shit Her yes. Worst Nightmare, and you can't do that till you have like 100 people. Damn. Wait. What? You can't really? Do what? Like YouTube.com slash Her Worst Nightmare, you need like 100 people on it. Oh, shit. So, Snap. We need all of us that, that want guys. that, get a fucking 100 people. But it's hard, you too. It's you know, you actually have to go there. It's not like Facebook. You don't just click something. It takes a little effort. Right. Luco's been trying since we got here. Mm-hmm. I hear you. Well, let's play another Herwer's Nightmare track off of the self-titled album that you guys brought tonight. What is another awesome song? I know we've been talking about it. Maybe we should play now in a heartbeat. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Here we go.
This is Justin. This is Dustin. Dustin's J and D of the so called Saints. Or so called Saints. Tell your boys. Or smell your boys. You're listening to the Mac Experience. Boom. All right, we just heard In a Heartbeat by Her Worst Nightmare. Morgan, urine. Uh, I'll pass. Perfect. <laughs> urine. Urine. <laughs> That's all I got. You're an idiot. Urine. Speaking idiot. of urine, I got a really cool bottle of soda called Pirate's Piss from Mars Cheese Castle this past weekend, and it was the best banana soda I think I've ever had. Tastes like banana runts. It tastes so like good. Oh, piss. What? I loved it. It was called Pirate's Piss, and it was a banana soda. Yeah, that it was sounds super good. Awesome. I liked it. I loved it a lot. It was really good. All right, so let's talk more Her Worst Nightmare. What about the pirate shot? Oh, the pirate shot? What about it? So a pirate shot is a shot of tequila, you snort a line of salt, and you squeeze a lime in your eyeball. And go, arr. And you go, arr, because your eye is full of lime juice. I'll do that right now if you buy it for me. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> What's the fucking bottom shelf tequila you got? That's fine. Are you doing that, Luca? Are you going to do mean, it? We could. I'm not going to do it. I like my eyeballs too much. I'll do it. Do we have video of it? I did a Snapchat uh, of it. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway. I don't think they could see that. Back to her worst nightmare. Um, individually, what song that you guys have written? It could be coming up. It could be what's ever on this album or in the past. What is your favorite song that you've written with her worst nightmare? For me, it's some of the newest stuff that's not going to be heard till later on. Because uh, I'm finally like getting, finally like. Moe's getting know, his groove back. Yeah, after after us not writing for a while, I'm finally getting my groove back with it, and it's a little heavier, and I don't know I like it more. I I, I want to release it as soon as possible, but I know that we have to wait and stuff, so that's cool. That makes sense. Shit, man. Probably maybe in a heartbeat, writing and stuff wise and recording, even though that's like the cut. When it comes to playing shows, like, well, that's like the first one to leave. But I like that song. That's what, like, when I met Mo and uh, showed what I do, that was the first song he ever heard, other than, like, my old band or whatever, that maybe made him want to play. So, like, in a heartbeat. Yeah, well, the song that made me want to play with Jay was, it's actually off the new EP. It's, all, it's called Addictions. That's the one that he had written, and I learned, and I was like, yo, dude, I learned how to play your song. And he's like, let's jam, and we played it, and then we did Heartbeat, I think. Then we learned Heartbeat, but I think it was Addictions first. Addictions is a shit, yeah. Yeah, it was a good song. Yeah, shit, and for me, man, I to be honest, favorite song, hands down, will always be Full Moon Fishing for myself. To me, that shit, like, branches off with what we're, what I see us actually being, what we're about is just fucking complete, utter destruction and fucking nonsense. Yeah, but just see, that's like a fun song too, though, because... Chords and shit, I just love the influences behind it. Hardcore, death metal, fucking metal. Yeah, metal if you look, li- like, there's all the lyrics and shit, it's killing a couple and a, a little boy at the end and shit. Like, the lyrics are crazy, but Full Moon is the fucking winter version of blue moon and we happened to be drinkers and we were supposed to go fishing and we the were going to go fishing the next morning but got f- too fucked up off full moon so <laughs> that's how that song happen. came yeah. about so anyone that has anything ever to but say like, we wrote other that song that. Like, it was insp- it was influenced by like the linger escape plan like all that shit i heard that so. just like the oh really that little bottom string the shit yeah in there. it totally yeah. reminded me of dillinger nice. yeah dillinger is big with love us yeah we love that band. i know you do too yeah we love that band so much now the artwork for this is very 
detailed and and it's a full like i mean everywhere even the cd like if you it, it's got texture to it who designed all the artwork for its self-titled uh anthony duran that's working on the ep right now and all all we need is the artwork and the ep's done so um but he's awesome yeah he did a good job with it so i got him right away for this one and um going forward i don't know maybe like i want to maybe look into someone else artwork wise and stuff but i mean he he's so good and obviously all by hand and stuff and his buddy in florida colors it that's awesome uh but um yeah we had we just sat around uh you know my apartment one day and had like a hundred bullet points of shit we wanted in it and he did everything and there's a lot of like chicago things in there and stuff there's like a gacy reference you know, there's, like, references to movies and shit like that that's, like, super subtle. Like, the band's really a collection of just everything we like. It's not, like, violent, kill all the women all the time. It's just kill everyone all yeah. the time. Yes. No yeah. one's left. Out. All or nothing. <laughs> hey I understand. So, for the influences that you guys have individually we touched a little bit on that now but has there been any bands that have come out recently that really have piqued your interest like of the more current bands now that you guys find yourself listening to uh knocked loose i mean anything i like i'm digging them a real lot their new one is fantastic new azalea dying is fucking killer new slipknot new slipknot yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I haven't, I missed them one time in the past 21 years live. Damn. So, I mean, I'm a huge Slipknot fan. I haven't heard you Slipknot yet. I've heard oh, oh, things. Oh, dude, it's so yeah. killer. The yeah. whole CD, their last one too was excellent. Yeah, that traditional sound and shit. It's and cool. I've got the, the new As I Lay Dying in the car. I just haven't put it in yet. Oh. Yeah, it's Let's killer, man. The, the new Immortal Bird CD, which is badass. And then right now I'm listening to the new. Uh, Jewel, fucking what's the name? Dyer is murder. No, I listened to that before Mor- Mortal Bird. What's the other band? Fucking. Uh, oh, fuck. Uh, Carnifex. Carnifex. Listen Carnifex. to Carnifex. I know the name. Nice. Forever. They got yeah. new stuff coming out. I haven't heard those guys in a minute. Yeah, it's been yeah. A while. The the album came out two months ago. Oh shit! So I've been nice. listening to the new Carnifex CD. To be honest, I'm straight old school. I'm not gonna lie. There's not too much that comes out now that really piques my interest. Dude, I would say check out the new Immortal Bird, man. The new Immortal Bird. Is I've known the name forever. Good, dude. It's Matt, got the drummer Matt. of Immortal Bird, is also an Air Raid. Matt, yeah, is the drummer oh, of shit. Immortal Bird is the drummer of Air Raid. Oh, and really? Female fronted death metal. And her vocals are so, fucking. Huh? No, oh, they're they're that. like fucking Chicago black metal, man, and they're fucking. They they're and legit. That, that's dope. Kind yeah, Air Raid's the shit. No, fucking... Uh, Immortal Bird. Fucking awesome. Immortal Bird. Awesome. Immortal Bird? Yeah. No, it's check a, it's a strange... Like, when I heard, I'm like... When you hear that name, Immortal Bird, I don't even know what style of music comes to mind. It's Peaks just such interest. a strange name. Maybe but, what? dude, they're like fucking Chicago Black Metal. I would think of a it's Phoenix. Fucking, it's badass. Because they keep regenerating. And it's a vocal... Uh, the, the vocalist is a chick, and she's fucking, dude, heavy as fuck, dude. Damn. Badass. Nice. The new Sick. CD. You can pull it up on YouTube, man. Just type in Immortal Bird and their fucking new CD will be right there. Chicago uh, band-wise, I mean, Influence were huge fucking uh, Broken Hope and Gorgasm fans. Oh, yes. yes. We'll support them no matter what. So, I mean, there, there's a lot of influence in uh, what we do because of them. Self-loathing. Yeah, I mean, it's we grew up on that shit. But, like, new music, man, there's, there's, like, there's so many good bands around here. You know, like, Crusadist, I mean, is great from those ashes, is killer. Um, Air Raid is fucking fantastic. I mean, just Disona, I mean, uh, there's just so many good bands around here. And they just keep popping up. There's yeah, no we're kind of going backwards. Yeah. yeah, personal band, like, for me personally, bands that are already out there, they're still releasing some music and shit. So, like Again, the new corn. I mean, good. you know, we come from that like, like older, very old school. But we met, but yeah, because like when Carlos said we met, 
It's because of blood, Bloodhound Gang. Bloodhound Gang. Bloodhound Gang, Blood Blood Gang and Gang. corn. Yeah. That shit was fucking awesome. Uh, I love Bloodhound Gang. Oh, yeah. Hooray oh, for, yeah. He had Bad touch. Uh, hooray for boobies in his Walkman. <laughs> And I was like, who the fuck CD is this? I was like, and right then, filled, and I'm like, me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like playing softball, and then we just fucking started partying. Me. Playing softball. Yeah. Yeah, we used to game a lot. I, Not he, professionally. This, this guy, he's my, he, first off, he was my br- older brother's friend. Then I, I stole all of his friends. And what nice. positions did you guys play? Oh, that was just kid shit. Yeah, it was just whatever we were friend too games, fucked up whatever, to play. Whatever we wanted. <laughs> yeah. I never played a base. Fuck that. Those <laughs> balls come at you too fast. <laughs> they do. <laughs> nice. I can attest. You're a pro softball player. I wouldn't say pro, dude. I fuck up. I'll show you. No, you're a pro. You got a beer I've league seen going? Your videos. Oh, what? dude. I fucking. I took a view. Play. You got a beer league it up. Dude, I've got plaques hanging up here. I'll show you boys before you leave. Oh, oh yeah. This bar sponsors my softball team, the Master Batters. <laughs> There's <laughs> a plaque away in the corner. Number one on the field and number one in your hearts, the that Master awesome. Batters. <laughs> and we're fucking getting <laughs> rocked this year. We started off 3-0, and now we're fucking sliding, man. We've lost our last, like, three or four. Fucking, fucking. Not dude. drunk enough. Dude, Masters. fuck it, man. Just fucking go out and fucking play, dude. Dude, I fuck up all the time. I play shortstop, but I fuck up all the time. It's like, dude, whatever, man. I'm fucking hanging out with my friends. And afterwards, we're going to fucking slam some fucking Models and fucking, you know, <laughs> eat some chicken wings. Who cares, yeah, man? I'm hanging yeah. out with my friends. Hell yeah. To talk to him four years ago like that, total opposite way of talking about things. He would be fucking pissed. I'd flip in tables. <laughs> about what? Playing drunk softball? Because he was so yes. mad that they lost. <laughs> oh, shit. He wouldn't want to talk after at the, the end game. Of the day, I don't want to lose. All right. But, well, know. we've got some announcements because we Fuck, are slowly man. wrapping up the My team was like night. one in 16. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my hockey Yikes. team. Oh, shit. Anyway, so just a few announcements of what's going on before next week's show, just so we can... Uh, Get some of this out here because I forgot my phone last get week. Get some so of it out here. There's some of it that needs to be said. That was a terrible foghorn noise. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sinister Fate is looking for a multi instrumentalist to play synth and rhythm guitar. They must be dependable, have own equipment, transportation, and be serious about the opportunity. And they practice on Sundays and gig regularly. So bring samples of your work in both areas and message Sinister Fate if you are interested. Uh, Forever Death Fest is coming up very quickly. Going to be happening December 5th uh, for the pre-party and then 6th and 7th at Beat Kitchen. Um, our friends in Everything Must Die, the Glory Ho guillotine band that we played earlier in the show, Inner Decay and Matiana are playing at Cobra Lounge as the um, pre-party. And then Forever Death Fest at Beat Kitchen features also... Um, Let's see. This is Forever Defus yes. Two. I am trying to look up how they did their banner. Uh, so Broken Hope, Broken The Skull, Huntsman, uh, Reaping Asmadia, Bloodletter, Beyond Dust, No Burial, uh, Inebrium, and more are all going to be playing at the Beat Kitchen. So make sure you grab tickets now um, before the day of. They are cheaper online. It's $20 in advance for Friday and Saturday individual dates or $25 at the door or two-day passes for $40 or $50 at the door for Beat Kitchen. And they're online, so you can go to Forever Death Fest and make sure you get them now. Our friends in Through and Through are currently on tour and they are promoting their R side, uh, their brand new album. Um, they are currently, today is the first, they're in Houston, going to be going up through Texas and then ending in Des Moines on the 18th. A few stops along the way, so make sure you uh, hit them up and see where they're at next. Go see them if you uh, see them coming near you. Our friends in All Famous are playing this coming weekend. So make sure you hit them up if you would like to play with the Dick Slapper experience. I would. Um, our yes, friends please. in Hemi are going to be playing live <laughs> at Impact Wrestling. They have their song All Glory what? featured at their um, their song in their like little commercial that is online video promoting That's it. Badass. And they're going to be playing at Marinette Park um, Saturday, October 19th. 
That's pretty fucking Man. cool. They've come so far, too, from the first time we saw yeah. them to now. Like, dude, like night and day. Hemi is the shit. Hemi I wonder is if the Trent shit. still has that picture of us at his nightstand. So one year we <laughs> sent Trent a no, picture. No, he showed up at our studio. He showed up at our studio. And I had a framed picture of us with Trent uh, from the one time that he'd been on our show. And it he was told so us that he put it on his it was stand. It was me and Morgan and Trent in the middle. And Morgan put it in like a little frame that she got at like the dollar store or something. And we gave it to him. And he was like, I have this on my, where do you have it? Like on I'm sure he does. He's so nice. stand next to his bed or something. <laughs> He's what like, is savage. I kiss it every night before I go to sleep. It was just so fucking like, what a funny so guy. fucking stupid, but so awesome <laughs> that we, like, we gave him a framed picture <laughs> of us. That's brutal. No, nah, he's a shit, With man. The, dude, Trent. You ever, do you have their hot sauce? Oh, yeah, he of has, course. Yeah. Man. And Trent's yeah. fucking funny. Like, he's the type of guy that, like, we were running, like, the band fucking called off, like, the day of. And Trent's like, dude, if you ever get a band that calls off, hit me up. And that kid can just fucking talk the whole, like, he... It was there was no dull moment the whole show he talked the whole time it was fucking epic. Sweet. He's a fucking badass. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Trent's the good man. times. Good times. But yeah, he also has a picture of us and himself on his nightstand. Mm-hmm. Pretty I need another model. I hope so. But anyway, our friends and victims are currently yes. on tour in Canada. What? What? Uh, they're in Quebec right now. They Quebec? end the tour in How Toronto. How do you pronounce that? Quebec. Quebec? Whatever. October 17th. So Quebec, make sure eh? you follow their Facebook page for all their updates of how awesome that tour is going. Who is um, that? Victims? Victims. Our friends in Fool's Brew are going to be opening up for Edema, Head P, Power Man 5000. Oh, blast from 1999. House, November right? 7th. That's a Thursday night. No, that's night. a blast from 2002. Um, yeah, that's pretty fucking awesome. I really want to go because it's the 20th anniversary of Power Man 5000's album, uh, Tonight the Stars Revolt. Oh, so 1999. That's a record, yeah. man. Yeah. That album is very good, uh, start to finish. It is really good. So our friends in Extinguish the Sun, we featured their brand new song um, in Oceans Deep last week, and it is now up on YouTube as a lyric video. You can check that out. Pre-order their upcoming album off of their website and Facebook page, for more information. Um, and then, hold on, there's more. Oh, there is a brand new compilation um, when, why am I forgetting? Eric Oldman came out from Sons of Rock. He mentioned this album. The Angry Peasants, Chicago's original band board. Uh, they do a free compilation of local bands every year. This is volume eight. Features a few of our friends. Um, of Wolves are on there. And then they have the Mound Builders. Coyote Man is on there. And Scientist, as well as a bunch of other bands. Scientist. You should definitely, Sons of Ra is obviously on there because they, they had uh, come on promoting it. And then Weed Be. So make sure you head to Bandcamp and you search Angry Peasants and you will find their Bandcamp with that free compilation for you to download. Pretty awesome. Uh, Malinche, haven't heard much from them. Malinche. They oh, have shit. a brand new EP out on Spotify and most major streaming services. It's called the Malicious EP, and um, it is EP number <coughs> one out of three that they will re- they will be releasing before the year ends. Dang. Finally. Some new fucking Malinche shit. Yeah, they're pretty sick. Dude, yeah, yeah badass. They've been on before. Those guys are fucking cool. Thanks. Yeah, it's been a while. Are you in Malinche? No, no. Oh, they're just like, thanks. <laughs> Not that bad. I'm like, wait, what? Like, you yeah. guys have been on. Did they come on without you? They came on with um, Dytheist. Yeah. That was a fun show because they had just released that EP together, or the CD. They uh, did a vinyl split. Yeah, don't we have the vinyl? We do. Damn. So, it was pretty sweet. Very nice of them to bring us that. Was Malinche the band that ate potatoes out of... Yes. No. That was maybe. Oh, that was. Uh, that was. I know who you're talking about. Anyway, okay. so our friends at we McKenna had and, and the guy put in his potatoes guardrail in the and ate them have entered the a contest, um, and it's the winner gets to open for Bayside on November 7th in Chicago. So make sure Bayside, you go like to Zach Morris and Zach Bayside, Slater. Bayside, Bayside.com. Vote I mean, for them to Zach play Morris the Chicago date. That's you know McKenna and Guardrail both shooting for the opening to be uh, opening for Bayside. Oh, dang. Um, Our friends in American Slang are playing Naperville on the 4th this coming Friday at the 105, which is a pretty awesome small venue. 
Then they're also playing the VFW um, at Maggie Mayfest in Pontiac on Saturday and then doing the Cubby Bear um, October 24th. Make sure you look up American Slang. They are awesome. Actually, Chris used I would to be in say, Strongman. I would say they're a very under oath Dillinger style band. They are. And ev- right? every, every, thing. every time I die. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jeff Teach is finally back up and writing again. It's been a while since he's uh, been writing. He used to do Teach's metal uh, reviews, but now he did a brand new website, and it's now called Hated One Metal Reviews. So make sure if you want metal reviews and interviews of your album, hit up Jeff Teach. He is up and running again. Our friends in Blood of the Wolf have a brand new album coming out November 8th. They're going to release their EP3, Blood Legend, Via horror, pain, gore, death productions. The what? Say that again. Horror, pain, gore, death productions. That is the name That's of the company releasing mouthful. it. Their pre-orders are available now. You can go on horrorpaingoredeath.com and uh, get that before uh, the end of the year. Um, Al Famous also has a video out for their song Judas, which you can check out before Saturday. Judas show. Priest? No, it's just called Judas. Oh, Judas, Judas. And that is all I got for the announcements because we're catching up from hey, last good, week. Good job, Morgan. Thanks. Thanks for not really interrupting me and being an asshole as usual. Uh, <laughs> next week, we are going to have Outrageous on the show. Outrageous? Outrageous. Um, funny story. I met one of the guys in Outrageous, and the reason why they're coming on the show is we met when I was working at Binnie's, and he recognized my wristband and the knee of the metal experience at the time. We had a conversation, then he hit me up, and now Outrageous is coming on. We may have a guest host of another podcast coming on this week, but... Who? Um, I can't tell you. It's a surprise? Well, I mean, I don't know if he's still coming. Wesley Jeffrey is supposed to... Wesley Willis? Wesley he's dead. Jeffrey of Jeffrey Artist Media is supposed to be coming on, but he... Um, Tell him no unless he's a, Wesley Willis. A faux show or not. But he's also in the band um, Invictus as the bass player. So we will see if he's going to come on. All right. But anyway, Outrageous cooler. will be on for West, their first time Wesley next Willis. week. You can come out to Fitz at Spirit Rock Keys over London. every Rock time Chicago. we record, which is Tuesday nights from 8 p.m. till about, I don't know, 10, 30, 11, depending. And uh, we're usually upstairs in the back room or the basement when they the send dungeon, us to the dungeon. The dungeon, Morgan. It's called the dungeon. That's all I got. Rock over London. Rock on Chicago. Where can everybody find everything that is her worst nightmare? Um, Facebook.com slash her worst nightmare. Instagram, uh, her worst nightmare official. Yeah. Fucking her worst nightmare dot bandcamp dot com. And we're going to get you to the YouTube so you can use Spotify. Definitely check us out on Spotify. Yeah, Spotify, the album's up. This will be up, I Ju- hope. Jukebox? Jukeboxes. Jukeboxes around Everywhere. North America. Yeah. Go into your local yeah. bar. You want to piss off your bartender because they're taking too long. Play nun fucker. Always play nun fucker. Best song. I've gotten yelled at several times. For It'll me. catch so their attention. It does work. You got yelled at for playing nun fucker in yeah, bars? but then I told people, it's okay. <laughs> and they were cool. It's okay. It is yeah. okay. Like, oh, okay. So play it all you want. Wait. You had to tell people it's okay? Yeah. But then also, if you want shit from us, um, anyone we just started to hype up this EP and shit, uh, go to our page and just ask for something. And I was at the post office earlier and shipped... A dozen, you know, envelopes to whatever, however many different states. You know, we don't give a fuck where. Just yep. ask, and you'll get a handful of shit. For you ladies out there, so, go ahead and ask me. I'll write your name on my chest with any colored marker you want, and I'll give you a shout out personally. That Boom. costs extra. <laughs> stickers and shit, free. Yeah, like stickers, you know, patches. Um, if you want a shirt or CD, just fucking. You know, ask us, you know. And for all you brutal ass metal fans out there, we have some crew shirts going around. They're only meant for the elite. Yeah, we're so in the middle of like. You're down for fucking posting our shit up, smacking stickers up anywhere you can. 
fucking putting our album up anywhere, promoting us at any fucking time you can. We got some crew shirts for you. You can wear out like street personally. Team yeah, we yes, got. I only made ten. You're gonna of have them, to personally yeah. message us. We only have ten limited. So yeah, so these are like- for the serious elite metalheads that are actually out there. Go ahead, send us a message. You'll get a repl- you'll get a reply from either of us, Mo, Jason, or myself, Carlos. Fuck Nick. <laughs> yeah, fuck <laughs> Nick. <laughs> Where's yeah? But we'll hook it up. Yeah, if we'll anyone definitely um, hook it up. We got stickers, lighters. We will ship out shirts. You can definitely look at all of our inventory again. Check out Bandcap slash Her Worst Nightmare, Facebook slash Her Worst Nightmare, Instagram. Everything's up. You can reach us anywhere. If you just want to fucking come and get fucked up with us when we practice, let us know. We'll set something up with you. Yeah, we'll do anything. I do coke too. <laughs> That's Jack a good fucking thing, dude. Fucking like you want to fucking come and fucking drink some beers and watch us practice? Yeah, that's fucking cool, man. I think more bands should do that. Yeah, the the stickers and and shit like the, the Coke free especially. stuff, man. Yeah, if any, <laughs> anyone Coke, anywhere if you want something to ask, and then yeah. we'll go to fucking tequilas afterwards and grab some burritos, right. some Coke burritos. Shout out yeah. Coke tequila. burritos. Yeah. Shout out tequilas and Burbank. Burbank. <laughs> oh yeah. Fuck Burbank. <laughs> now, what's the last song that you want to play tonight? Yeah. Um, uh, how about a gruesome farewell? The Ooh. last track on the album. That's a that's a great idea. Personal favorite. Well, thank you guys so much for coming out. Finally, Thanks we've had us. you on the show, and can't wait to get you guys back to promote some new music when you have it out next thank year. Thank you for having yeah. us. Yeah, I thank you guys very much, can't and anyone who was asked so for shit. I'm real supporting. fucking drunk, man. By the way. <laughs> Perfect. You and me both, brother. So the new, the CD you got out right now, the self-titled, you can get right now. We've got the EP coming out tentatively January of about 2020. January 3rd. And then you've got yeah. another full length, you said, coming out October of Ideally. 2020. Yeah. Ideally. Ideally. So Ideally. keep a fucking lookout for Her Worst Nightmare ripping up your fucking faces in 2020. Yeah. Keep, it, keep in touch. Thanks for listening. Hell yeah. Thanks for jamming out. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in to the Metal Experience. Here is a gruesome farewell.